tonight, God has given me, I believe, a message that is much needed and has been kind of a theme lately because every time God speaks, it seems like there's a series without it being called a series, it still is a, an interlocking series of sermons. And I believe this is a time that God actually can give us strategies. And if you don't know it, just pick up a newspaper and you'll see that stability is not most of America. America itself is not stable. And we are in shaky times. I believe we are in shaky times. And that's why we need such a radical adjustment right here in America. We really need President Obama to retire. We need him to. Praise God. <laughs> It's not because of anything other than we are in a, in a downhill spiral of, of shaky times that we're coming into. And I'm not saying this because of, I, of what I, you can read in a newspaper or from CNN or Fox News. What I'm saying this from is because when America makes decisions based on homosexuality, based on same-sex marriage and 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 and. and the, the, the abortions and different decisions that are being made widespread across the United States, there is going to be judgment. Also, the way Israel and all the decisions is being made there, there's going to be judgment. And that's, that's a hard fact. That's not saying, uh, uh, that's just what God says. That's the way it is right now. So we got to understand that in the midst of Shaky times. We need strategies. And stability. How many know that we cannot be dependent on the government? 9-11 and Katrina proved that. People kept dying. The place that is the greatest place on earth is the United States of America but yet could not rescue people fast enough right here in America. See, it wasn't like Pearl Harbor where deaths were evident. But whenever you have so many people still being pulled out of the rubble uh, uh, days later, something's wrong here in America. And I believe we are in such an opportune time that we as a church can rise up above and show our true divine connection with God and prove that we are different than any church in the world. And I'm not saying just us, but I believe there are several places and several moves of God that God's going to do across America that's not going to look like church. It's not going to look like the status quo, but it's going to be moves of God who know who their God is, and their God knows who they are. And it's going to be divine strategies. So tonight, the title in itself is Discover Divine Strategies. And we need this because we have to know what we're doing. You have to be led. You have to be able to, to move this way or move that way and know when to do it. <coughs> but this is an invitation. This is not something that I just want to preach about. But God says, I'm inviting you to come up here so that I can show you things to come. Come on, that's what the scripture says. And, and hold on because help is on the way. Why are angels starting to show up? Like so easy. I mean, easy peasy. Angels are showing up easy. We didn't have as many angels probably in the last, since we've been in this building, we haven't hardly had that many angels in the Litchfield Revival. 
Why is it so easy for angels to show up? Because we're in a divine order, a divine invitation. Not every church is responding. Not every ministry is responding. But God says, hold on, help is on the way. Help is on the way. You've got to understand the spirit of truth is releasing divine wisdom and divine strategies for these days that are shaking. See, our nation could shake, but we as a man and woman of God should not be able to shake at the same time. We should be able to know we'll be all right. With shaking going on around us, we should be able to look in ourselves and say, we'll be all right. Come on. God's bringing passionate seekers of truth that will discover God has opened a door of revelation to them. Whether you know it or not, God has divinely opened the door. He opened the door to us. What bugs me the most is when people could see the door standing open. And they made a decision not to go to that door. That what, that's what bugs me the most. It's not really the people that left months, years ago. It's the people that just left that bugs me the most. Not because whether I care so much more for them or not. That's, that has nothing to do with it. It just means, my gosh, you got to that place. You got to that place, and you could see it, but you made a choice not to go through it. Amen. That's like getting to the promised land and not entering in. Come on. <clears throat> this divine wisdom will lift us up higher into the realm of the spirit where divine strategies and plans are being laid. I don't care what takes place in America. God will give you a strategy. I don't care if there's foreign soldiers on our nation. He will give us a strategy. I don't care if the economy goes through the floor. He'll give you a strategy. I don't care what takes place. Whatever takes place, he will give you something. And say, let's do this. I don't know about you, but whenever it comes to the end of days, the end of the world, we better know who we are. We better recognize God as our source. Come on. I'm telling you, friend, you got to understand there is a time that's coming that Social Security is not going to be paying checks. Our government is not going to be paying Christians. You know, there's already talk of one world government. There's prophetic utterances being released from false prophets about one world order. And we need to find strategies that, that we can understand that our God reigns and is always in complete control. It's coming to a place that it's harder to find real lovers of God. You know how you can really appreciate what you have? Go somewhere that doesn't have what you have. Any of you need a good wake-up call? Just pick a church and go to it. Sit through the whole entire service beginning to end. Just sit through it and be open. Most churches. You might find one that's really awesome, but guess what? There's most churches across America that don't have what we have right here in this little place. And I'm not saying this because of haughtiness or pride. I'm saying this because God has given us a divine opportunity. He has blessed us. He has given us an open door. He has called out to us. He is the one that gave us the open door to revelation. It's not anything so special. It's just that he invited us in. 
Sometimes our family doesn't get to a place of not being appreciative. And I think Christmas is going to be a real wake-up call. Is they're going to go into the den of the lions. And usually on their way home every Christmas, we begin to thank God for what we have. I don't care how messed up you are. You get around your family. You all find out, man, we're doing really good. Hallelujah. Come on. See, these tactics release greater understanding and unfolding events of a higher perspective. None can afford to stumble now. No one in this place can afford to stumble right now. This is a time you cannot miss it. In times past, God said, I'm going to do this. And if you responded within a certain amount of time, you still got that. But things are moving much quicker now. And if God says, I'm getting ready to do this in your life, and if you don't respond very quickly, you're going to miss it. Let me tell you something. The prophetic words and what God promises you isn't just hanging around waiting for you to wake up. They are coming quickly, on fire, right now. We can't afford to stumble around. We got to consider a, a wake up call. This was a promise. It said, Therefore, he says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall shine upon you and give you light. See, we got to look how at our walk carefully. We got to look at how we live our life carefully. <clears throat> how many live for a purpose? Do you live for a purpose? What is your purpose? Is it watch TV? What is your purpose? What do you live for? See, we got to have a purpose. You can't just live. This is an hour. If you are living and you don't have real purpose that's in God, you're going to stumble. Let me tell you something. I'm going to say this, and I hope it bugs and cause somebody to their very skin to crawl. God doesn't take things away from us because he enjoys taking away things. He takes things away from us because he knows that they are distractions. And when those things are took away from us, he is trying to get us to change our ways. But many times, as those things are out of our reach, we are just waiting to get them back instead of changing. That is a dead man walking. That's somebody who has no vision. That's somebody that is not going anywhere. That's somebody that isn't listening and doesn't even care about what God is saying. So you got to understand when something comes out of your hands and it's took away and you know God's part of it, you got to understand there's a reason behind it. See, we got to live purposely, purposefully, and we got to understand and worthily because and accurately, not in an unwise way. And witless, or, 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 but we're supposed to be wise. We're supposed to live wise. We're supposed to make the very best of our time. Do you make the very best of your time? I know in our house we get a lot of burners going. You know what I mean by burners? 
It's like you got a stove with all kinds of burners on it. And you get one started, and after that one's brewing a little bit, then you throw another one on the stove. And then that one's going, and then you got another one started, and then another one started. And no matter how many we get finished, we've always got a new one getting thrown under the stove. We've got to make the most, of <coughs> the most of our time. The days are evil. Do you know there is more false evangelism than real evangelism? I'm going somewhere with this, by the way. I, I'm kind of, some of you are messing me up, but I'm going through you re- first. And what I mean by that is some of our closest friends will try to lead us to hell. That's evangelism, but it's false. They'll try to lead you the wrong way. We got to hear this call. The Lord is imploring us to receive divine wisdom. How do you receive it? You got to be open to it. You got to say yes to it. He's extending the very specific, very urgent invitation to his bride that says, Come up here. Do you notice whenever he says, come up here, I will show you things. It's not, I'm coming to you. You have to come to me. <clears throat> God's plans are perfect. Do you know that? His plans are perfect. They don't just occur. See, sometimes I think we get to the place we think, well, you know, God has a plan and it just happened. No, it's perfect the way it happens. Some of you don't understand what I'm saying, but you got to understand this. you got to understand that when my wife and I got placed in each other's lives, it was perfect. And it was orchestrated. It was a plan God had. And I'm telling you, when we got this building, it was perfect. It didn't just happen. It was a perfect plan. Come on. We was just on the verge of seeking to get a $100,000 loan, and then God made a perfect plan. Just from the income of the ministry in the past year, I guarantee you if we'd had a $100,000 loan in the natural, we would have lost this place. But we have had no loan. Thank you, Jesus. I'm saying this because some of us just think things happen. I said something tonight to somebody that if some people don't, if they're not careful, they're going to miss it. Do you know what I mean by miss it? I'm talking about God's divine promises over their life. You can be in the midst of a blessed house and be the only one missing the whole thing. You can be the only person missing all the blessings. Because guess what? This is not a package deal. God says, come up here. He invites you individually. And you've got to respond individually. You're not going to be able to go up. Well, you know, Bill went up, so I'll just get the leftovers. No, no, no. And in this place, it's not a Bill Vincent only type of ministry. It's time for us all to go up and get some. See, God's plans are perfect. God's perfect heavenly plans are brought to earth through his divine synchronizing moves. What's that mean? It means this. What God says he's going to do is already done in heaven. (coughs) What God says he's going to do is already done in heaven. You know, when God tells you that he wants to do something in your life, 
It's already completed. You just got to tap into it to get it done here. It's already been done. That's why he spoke it. So now it's time for you to respond. When you respond, it completes. It's done in heaven, and when it's done in heaven, it has to be done on earth. This building was already planted in heaven as soon as God spoke it. Sometimes we got to receive it. Sometimes we got to partake of it. Sometimes we got to respond to it. Sometimes we got to go through an open door. Sometimes we got to move when God says move. But I'm telling you, it isn't as hard to do something when God says, I've already got, I've done this. I promise this to you. That means it's complete in heaven already. I love when people say this. I don't know what to write. If God told you that you're supposed to write a book, it's all in there. I don't know what to draw. Well, if God says you're going to draw, it's all in there. This is going to bug some people, and that's what it's meant to do. God says, oh, you're going to do this, this, and this, and this. And then we just wait. As soon as it's been spoke out of God's mouth, it's actually already finished in heaven. We just got to find it. And where do you find it? Up here. Come on, we're going a little shift of a direction for a moment to mess some of you up. Yes, I'm off the points already. You know, one of the greatest things I believe God has done in my life is he responds to my obedience. Not everything that you do is about really what you're doing. Sometimes it's just about doing it because you're supposed to do it. Some people are like, man, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to write this book and it's going to make thousands upon thousands of dollars. I'm going to make millions. It's going to be a bestseller. No, sometimes it's just because God said, write the book. You write the book. It finished the book. Now you've been obedient to do the book. Come on. It's not that God can't bless that thing, but you've got to understand, when God says to do something, obedience opens the windows of heaven. God says this, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. How many have ever tried to figure out God in your way? The Bible says his ways are not your ways. His thoughts are not your thoughts. Then why are we trying to figure it out? I don't understand exactly. See, God has a way of doing things, and we need to understand. That's why we need divine strategy. I've been in times where God says this. He says, I'm getting ready to bless you and pour out the windows of heaven. So I go up to get divine strategy. Lack of finances, nothing going on. And he says this, spend everything you got, and I'll bless you. That doesn't make sense when you're almost broke. Come on, sometimes that's a divine strategy. Why? Because it doesn't make sense. See, you could tell God, I, we need a few thousand dollars and we need it now. Come on, God, break through. Hallelujah, let it come down now. We pull it down now. And you get into that thing and you're up in heaven and you might just have a few hundred dollars and, and God says, spend it all. And then I'll bless you. So you come back and you're like, that doesn't make sense. We need more money, not spend what we got. You know, God opened up a whole lot of breakthrough in our life while we were eating Chinese before. Sometimes you go eat Chinese and God blesses you. Sometimes it's just, God says, go spend this. It's expensive there, man. 
but you just go and, and you, you don't even realize sometimes you're just going and you're just going and when you do that, praise God, there is a breakthrough that takes place. But you got to do it divinely. How many know, how many have ever tried to spend it all just because you thought that's what God wanted to do? you got to know what you're doing when you do this. <coughs> Let's say that again. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Some of you keep saying, I don't understand. Exactly. God is... It's worse than algebra. <laughs> Come on. It is. Because he's just, it's not logical. Come on. At one time, God told us to buy a house, and I was like, we could barely cover the rent. Come on. See, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Higher, higher. Come up here. You want to get into the mind of God? Come up here. And I will show you things to come. We're all waiting and waiting and waiting. He said, come up here. See, what we don't understand is sometimes whenever we're, we're lacking finances, God will say, sow a seed. Come on. Logically, you're thinking, no, I need to keep everything I got because I barely got anything. There was somebody who used to come here, and they would come to a service, and, and God would tell them, give your $20. And, and logically, they thought, I don't have any gas. And God just said, give it. So they'd give the $20, and they'd drive home on fumes. And God would end up blessing them left and right, and they kept getting blessed every time they did something like that, and it was God. Sometimes you don't even realize it's not logically. Also, look at this part. For as the rain and snow come down from heavens and return not there again, but water the earth and make it bring forth and sprout, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Continue this, and this is all in Isaiah 55. So shall my word that goes forth out of my mouth, it shall not return to me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose, and it shall prosper in the thing which I sent it. As I said before, if God said it, it's done. God says, I'm going to bless you. It's done. God says, I'm going to give you enough. I'm going I'm to bless you so much that you're going to be able to go on vacation. It's done. <clears throat> See, we've got to understand, we need divine wisdom. you got to stop putting your head in the sand and crying, woe is me. How many here will admit that there's times that you think, man, other Christians have it easier than I do? Well, she gets blessed and, and barely does anything. You know what? Something is better than nothing. Sometimes you don't even realize there's a part of us that always compare ourselves to somebody else. And how many know when you go up and, and press into the things of God, your measure might be different than your brother or sister or husband or wife.
See, God's the only one that knows your heart. He knows how much you're really giving. Come on. This guy over here, people get bugged by him. You. Because he gets five minutes with God and all heaven opens. And then some people, they got to stand on one leg, pat their tummy and rub their head or pat their head or rub their tummy and, 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 and do a devotion and sing a song. And, and, and then they barely, barely get a tickle and by then they're already asleep. It's like, what did he do? Walked in the woods. What? <laughs> Come on. Some of us might want to just try something different. And some of you, you're like, I'm going to go be with the Lord. You lay on your bed and look at the ceiling. How many times have God come down from that one? So you got to understand, there is something we're supposed to be responding. We make it complicated. See, in shaky times, we need a divine strategy. And if we're just waiting and not going anywhere now, how much more and how much worse is it going to be for Christians in the church if we're in the midst of a disaster? Wisdom. Wisdom. I think some of you can imagine wisdom and the prophetic and different things. I've I've actually bugged a lot of ministers. They'd be forty years in the ministry and I'd be like a twenty year old getting divine downloads from God and they'd be like where are you getting this stuff? Frustrated. Because guess what? God's not a respecter of persons. He gives to those who come up. If we have something coming out of our mouth that says, why do they get that? What about me? Why do they? If you compare yourself to somebody else in any type of argument, your best way to have victory is to go up there. Stop making it about somebody else and go to the throne. You're ha you'll have fruit and you start going up and don't try to go up when they go up. In other words, just go up. It's all about you and God. And when you go up, you're going to come down and you're going to have fruit. Divine wisdom Versus natural understanding. See, the Lord said to me, knowledge without wisdom is worthless. Knowledge without wisdom is worthless. How many know a lot of people know the Bible, but they have no wisdom? However, knowledge with divine wisdom is priceless. See, consider this profound insight. S uh, seize from your own human wisdom. We're supposed to seize from our own human wisdom. Here's the biggest fault I believe Christians have today with the prophetic. They say this. What does that mean? Human wisdom isn't going to help that prophetic word. How many times has somebody explained to you what a prophetic word they thought meant, and you, you looked at them thinking, what? that is not even close to what probably God was saying. Let me tell you something. Most prophetic words, when they are fulfilled, was nothing like you thought they were to be. Come on. 
They're nothing like you think. God says, God might say, for example, you're going to go and you're going to get this done, this done, this done, this done, and the doors are going to open for you. So you look at it. I've got four big projects. Because you're using that. I love when people almost want to give up before they even get started. How many have ever bought anything that's in a box full of parts? Come on, you got a beautiful picture on the box. You're so excited. You open the box, and it's nothing but a thousand pieces of this beautiful thing that you have to put together. Isn't it wonderful? Especially Christmas. It's just so awesome when you open up a Christmas gift, and you got now, okay, uh, some assembly required. That's what they say. Some assembly. Well, you know, if you need a whole bunch of tools, you know, come on, and it, and it says it may take 20 to 30 minutes to put that thing together. And, and, and how many know? It's already different. But see, that's a complication. But see, when God spoke the word, it's that picture on the box. But there might be some assembling required. Come on. God says, I'm going to do this, 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 and this, and this. And it's going to break through, and it's all going to happen. Here it is. And you're like, wow. And you open the box, and it's pieces everywhere. You got a bag of nuts and bolts and washers, and, and you got some funky-looking screwdrivers. Look like somebody made at a prison. You ever see some of those screwdrivers? They look like somebody welded the thing in prison to make it a shank. And now you got to start putting it together. See, God said this promise, the picture, and you're starting to put it together. And sometimes, if how many likes to skip the instructions? You just put, the, you just prop up the box off of the corner, and you're like, okay. The seat goes here. <laughs> Handlebars goes here. Wheel goes, oh, shoot, it's upside down. So now what do you got to do? You got to take it apart. Come on, now you got to take it apart. You got a seat on where the tire goes. Come on, so now you're taking it apart. Now, don't get me wrong. Some of these are very simple, and it's just boom, 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 boom. Because that's a prophetic word. That is quickly to take place. The bigger the prophetic word, the bigger the picture, and the more parts. And what happens when you try to skip a few parts? Oh, we don't need the washers. Come on. We don't need the washers. Come on, we don't need that. We don't need that. Oh, I think that's just an extra piece. So you just put this all off to the side of things you didn't want to assemble, you didn't want to go through, you didn't want to open the doors for. So, so now you've got all these little parts, and you're like, well, good. Now I got, my, my, got the prophetic word fulfilled, and you're writing it, and it's going like this because of all those little pieces that weren't in it. Your handlebars are spinning around in circles. Now, did God lie? No, he promised this, and it was there. It's we didn't respond to every little piece of the puzzle to fulfill it. Some of us are just getting a skim coat of what God promised. We're just getting the, the pretty part of it. I don't know about you, but I want the whole enchilada. Come on. If God says, I'm going to do this, this, or this, I want the picture, and I want it just like the picture. And see, when you jump through every hoop, and you go through every, this whole sermon got changed, by the way. 
You jump through every hoop. You respond to everything God says to respond to. And you look back and you think, my goodness, this was difficult. This was hard. And then all of a sudden you get on that bike. You've got all the parts put on. You ride it for a day and then the tire goes flat. What happens whenever God promises you something and it begins not to be exactly as God promised? You have a warranty. God is as good as his word. It shall not return to me void. Come on. How many have ever took back your blessing to God? Said this wasn't right. Come on. Is there a warranty? Let me say this. Let's turn it a different way. So if you're healed by the power of God and then about a year later it starts hurting again, do you have a warranty? Come on. This is good preaching. You're just looking at me. Come on. You have a warranty. I'm healed. Come on. If your toes were healed, and which they are, and you're having healing and, and, and things are hurting, and let's say a year from now they start hurting really bad, you have a warranty. So take your feet back to God and say, uh, I need to exchange these. Again, because I have a warranty. Come on. See, we don't understand sometimes. We're coming up short. God wants divine wisdom, not natural understanding. See, natural understanding, man, we just want it to make it look good. We just want it quickly. It's like giving a two-year-old this big clubhouse that she gets to play in. And when you open the box, it's in a million pieces, and she wants to play now. And you keep telling her, you got to wait. It's not ready. But she wants it now. So here, you can play with it. There it is. It's all flat. Have fun. That's the way we are as Christians. And I want you to think about this. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I love when God this does that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What does this all mean? Natural knowledge and understanding without divine wisdom is empty. In fact, the plans and purposes of man are destined to fail. See, if you have a plan and a purpose that is yours, it's probably going to fail. If it's God's, it will succeed. If you are, your only vision is, I want to watch TV, I will watch TV, I have watched TV. Oh, that's really wonderful. Is that a vision of life? Is that a life worth living? Come on. See, we don't understand sometimes that is not God's will for us. There's nothing wrong with having a little time and, and just unwinding, but I'm telling you, if God says you got this door and this door and you need to do this to get there, I don't care about anything else but getting to those doors. That would be like God saying, I'm going to give you a big 65-inch plasma TV with all the movies and TV and everything that you want fulfilled, and it's going to go into your bedroom to where you don't even have to get out of bed. And we'll even put a toilet a foot away from your bed so you don't even have to leave the room. I know that's a little disgusting. But let's just say, and God says, this is what you can have. Some assembly required. So you open up this box, and it's all in a million pieces. It's all in a million pieces. Come on, now you've got to begin to put it together. And you can't ask for a bill bill. 
or anybody else in the house to help you. You've got to put it together yourself. That is what some of this going through the garage doors is. You're asking, you're wanting somebody else to get it done. And one of your biggest blessings and one of the biggest things that could bless your socks off is probably in one of the garage doors. You know, a lot of times when, we, when God says, I want to do this, this, and this, and you say, but, you might as well put a T on the end of that but. <laughs> See? I t- come on. Did you hear that? <laughs> come on. But. Yeah, your butt just got in the way. That's what happened. But nothing. You're trying to hide your... Um, So you've got to understand that, in fact, the plans and purposes of man are destined to fail. Only divine strategies succeed. Divine strategies are all that will succeed. Our natural mind and human intelligence without guidance and illumination of the Holy Spirit do not have the ability to understand God's word. I love when people used to try to interpret their prophetic words. Man, they were messed up. Well, you know, God meant this. You know, God said this. So, you know, I will never have to work. Where did he say that at? I love when people misinterpret prophecy. And I really love it when people try to interpret your dream. Oh, dream. You had a dream. You were on a roller coaster. Well, that's ministry. Not if I was naked. Come on. Not if it's not always going to be about that. I love when people try to say, you know, it's it's biblically that it's a roller coaster is this. Then how can it be biblically? Come on, Peter didn't ride on on you know uh, 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 some screaming eagle with Jesus. Come on. <coughs> Our natural mind is insufficient for God's strategy. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Come up here. How do I get there? Just begin to worship. Begin to pray. Actually get up off the couch. God might just want five minutes of you going, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, boom, you're there. You say, well, couldn't I do it from, from here? Hallelujah, thank you Jesus. All right, let's say this. Let's say the Antichrist is running rapid across the United States. And you have to either take the mark of the beast to eat or drink, to have food or drink, or they kill you if you don't take it. And nobody in this room is together. And when they find you, you're alone. How are you going to respond? <laughs> At least she was right there. At least I'm out. Or you're going to trust in God for a divine strategy. You know God's wanting to take the church to a level to where if they look at you and they shoot at you as a Christian, the bullets will go right through you. All your superheroes and things you watch on TV are nothing compared to the end time church. Come on. We're, we're, it's biblical that we're going to come to a place we will be able to be transported, go through walls, <laughs> move when God says move, and, and not be found by the enemy. 
stealth Christians. They'll be like, they're over here, they're over here, and they come, and we're all invisible. What's going to happen? That's a supernatural God that we serve. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm telling you, we are not supposed to stay here. The Bible says that the carnal mind is death. How many, how many know that? Your mind can lead to death. A spiritual mind leads to life and peace. See, if your mind is on things above, you won't look at things here. We used to say in that song, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I'm telling you, are we moved by everything or not? You cannot dare to rely on your natural mind. You cannot rely on your natural mind. See, your natural mind doesn't make sense to the spirit realm, and the spirit realm doesn't make sense to your natural mind. You could be broke, messed up, have nothing, and in the things of God, you'll be happy about it. Oh, it's all right. Got to got to make a way. Mm -hmm. This is a season we cannot stumble. We cannot stumble. And we cannot use our speculation and uh, try to figure out everything. Guess what? God's about to come up on the church and sweep it off its feet. And do such a sur surpassing, profound statement of His divine order and power that is going to change the entire church structure. And our mind is not going to be able to keep up with it. You know, some of your families are wishing you to fail. We got to allow the Word of God to become flesh of our flesh. You know, God's going to make some of us in this room so spiritual in the days ahead that they're not going to want anything else. Nothing else. Not one other thing. Be like, you want to go get a movie? No, not tonight, because I want to press it. Do you want to watch TV? Get on your laptop? I'll get on my laptop, but I'm not going to watch TV. I just want to type on something because I really feel there's something in me that I want to release. You want to listen to this type of music? No, I want to worship. You say, oh, I would never get like that. You're supposed to rock the state that you live in and the youth movement. You're supposed to lead many into the kingdom of God. Do you think God picks on you? That's exactly right. If he gave you one thing to do, you still would be, ah, uh, one thing. But he gives you four because he knows that will really push you back. And just so you know, if you don't start dealing with the four, he's going to turn it to eight. And if you don't get the eight, he'll turn it to 16. And then we can go to 32, come on, and 64. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Come on, isn't that the way God sometimes? He will keep pushing to get through to you. Yeah. I'm trying to get it done. Oh, yeah, you're trying. Man, 
the sermon is totally different tonight. God is offering each of us to come up higher. Isn't it time for us and our families to see the higher realms and experience them? Everybody in this world going through hardship, and we're blessed. We are to be blessed in the midst of everything going the wrong way. See, some people have desired for us to fail, and they have prayed for us to fail. That's why we need divine strategies. Now is the time to embrace true wisdom. And you might be asking, how do I obtain this much desired divine wisdom? And the way to obtain this wisdom that I'm talking about is first, you have to respond. God's divine wisdom isn't reserved for a special few. It's available to all believers who are hungry for intimacy. (laughs) What happens when you find something that you love so much that you just love it? I mean, you love it. You watch one, then you got to watch another and another and another and another. You love it. It becomes a passion. See, God's looking for you to have a hunger and a passion for him to where you begin to pour in your heart after that that you want another and you want another and you want more. And when you get more, you want more. And when you get more, it's better than a box of chocolates. You can't just have one. It's like trying to eat one chip. It's trying to like, I mean, it's, it's the same as trying to eat one piece of chocolate. We need to begin to step forward tonight. I really believe there's a portal in this altar tonight. That we're supposed to step forward to receive an outpouring of the Spirit. And let me tell you something. I've got to say it just the way God said it. This portal is open for only those that are here tonight. What so-and-so who isn't here tonight? I'll talk to the chair. This portal could have fast-forwarded everything that she needs to get done. What would take a month, she could have done in a week because of this portal. But she's going to miss it tonight. This portal is a progressive portal. In other words, it's like you're going to go into it, and you're going to have increase progressively. But you're going to have to allow the progression. I'm feeling the anointing tonight because it's time for us to come up here. It's time for us to enter in to that higher level and expect the higher things. I'm telling you, we keep saying the same thing over and over and over again. We keep telling these kids over and over and over again, you're going to need to get it on track. You're going to need to get in line. This is a time you need to. you got to. You can't miss it. And I'm telling you, sooner or later it's going to sink in. Because everybody around us is going to be blessed. Come on, people like Ben and Paula and Sam and Ryan and Tasha are going to be blessed so much that they're going to be shocked. People are going to be shocked when they see you. Come on. People are going to be so blessed that they're coming and they're going to be receiving much blessing just because they come. Because what we are about to step over into 
is an increase of progression. And what I mean by that, and this has happened in other revivals, to where things that took a month was done in a day. Things that took a year was done in a few days. What things took 10 years happened in just a matter of a week or two. Because we're about to step over into that divine strategy. There's at least two dozen angels throughout this place. Two giant ones and a whole bunch of little ones. And you know what they're doing? They're anticipating. You look around and think, my goodness, there's not much here. But they are anticipating. Why? Because they know that they know that they know that this is about to release that progression. And that progression means their business is about to pick up. We can't miss it now. And I guarantee you this is going to be the time where people are going to say, can you come over? Can you spend the night? Can you come to my house? Can you come over? Can, you, can, can, can I have some time with you? Why? Because distractions will come out of the woodwork in progression. Distractions will come out of the woodwork during progression. In other words, this is always going to be increasing starting tonight. So I'm going to ask my wife to play a song while the song's playing. The portal's in this altar. And all you're going to have to do is come to this altar and respond to the Lord in agreement. And we're going to we're going to begin to see advancement, increase in personal lives. Don't forget, God said he's about to spew out of his mouth blessings upon everyone. We're about to see it. 2016 is going to add several many digits to the income of this group. Because it's time for us to be blessed in the midst of the rest. You have paid a price through all the different storms and all the different roads and all the different turns, all the different transitions. And you're going to receive portions of those who turned away. So tonight, we're going to step up and receive our portion. Come on, let's worship.